guys, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net and today we're going to be starting a new video series on Lightroom. And what it's really going to target is workflow and editing and then exporting when you're doing large projects like events, weddings, anything where you're going to be taking more than one, two, three hundred photos, you need a fast way to get those photos onto your computer, a fast and safe way to get those photos onto your computer, backed up into Lightroom, categorized, edited, and exported. And what is the quickest or most efficient way to get the highest quality photos? Well, today I'm going to show you how to do that. So, what we're going to start off first is my workflow. I have an SD card where I shot a wedding this weekend, and we're going to take the photos off that and back it up into a folder system. Now, this folder system that I built works really well. Also, it not only does it work well with Lightroom, but it also works very well with if you don't use Lightroom and you just want to find a way to categorize your photos and keep up with them and keep them organized. This is a great way to do it. So, I'm going to put the SD card in. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go build the folder system. So let's go into my computer and we're going to go into pictures this is where I keep all of my photos at. This is the hard drive that I keep it in. And 2016 and daviddispanet.com is where I do when I do any of my commercial professional work. This is the folder that it goes into. And now we're going to make a new folder. Now, this is the Rupp wedding, actually, is what we're going to be importing some of those photos. But we're going to make it a separate folder, just so you guys can see the workflow that I use. So it was 07. Now, it is set to 03. That's when I actually took the photos. I'm going to set to 04 so we don't have a replicated name of a folder. And 16, and then Rupp, underscore, and then wedding. So once I've done that, I'm going to double click within here. I'm going to right click or command V and I'm going to copy that because now we're going to go inside that folder and we're going to make another folder. We're going to make actually two more folders within this folder. And this one will be underscore edited. So this is where I will send all my edited photos once I've exported them. I will export them into the edited folder. And then we're going to do another one, and this will be underscore, and this will be raw. This is where I'm going to put all my raw photos. Again, double click, right click, copy, or you can do command A, which will highlight, command C, which will copy, command V, which will then paste, just to let you know for people that use PC. So I can hit control V, underscore, and then I shot with the 6D, oh, 6D, and we can do new folder. Control V again. I shot with the T3I. And one more Control V. And then my second shooter that I had at this wedding shot with the 70 underscore mark underscore two. So this is where I would categorize each individual camera that I shot with or that photos were taken. Okay, so that way, one, I can keep up with where the photos are at and I know which camera it is, I know that the 6D is where majority of the photos that I'm going to want to edit are at. So those are the ones I'm probably going to focus on making sure they get edited because those are going to be the best photos. Um, the 7D Mark II, I haven't gone through all of those yet because my second shooter just gave them to me, uh, let's say. So, uh, so, you know, those may be important photos as well, but I want to break them down into different categories. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the computer and or my computer, and then we're going to go in and grab some photos. Now, we're not going to get all the photos. We're just going to grab a few. So we'll grab like, let's say 60 photos here. So, and then we'll hit control C, which will copy those photos for me onto a clipboard. And we'll go back into my photo hard drive. We'll go all the way back into the folder again, and we'll go into raw and where they're going to go. That was with my Canon 60 that these photos were taken. So these photos are going to be put in the Canon 60 folder. So now it is importing those photos. While that's doing that, let's open up Lightroom and go on and talk about importing your photos. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hit import. And let's talk a little bit about the importing settings. So over here to the right, you have uh, build previews. I have it set to minimal because uh, I want this to go a little bit faster. But if you're doing any, any type of photography where the photos, seeing the full resolution is very important to you, you want to do one, one previews. So what that will do is it will go over each individual photo and it will render it out to give you that full pixels. So you can really see the quality of the photo. The problem with that is, is that if you have thousands of photos or a thousand photos, it is going to take a while to do those one, one previews and it's going to slow down any editing that you need to do while it's doing that. So what I would suggest, plan to, Drop your photos into a file folder if you have time. 
bring them into Lightroom and import them at 1.1 1, 1 and come back to them in like an hour or two. Um, or it, it, depending on how many photos there are and how fast your computer is, it may take, it could take a little while. Uh, for mine to do a thousand photos, it could take quite a while. Now my computer is fast enough where I'm able to do 1.1 1, 1 previews and edit at the same time, as long as I'm not running too many other applications and not have any issues. Uh, but today we're just gonna set to minimal. We're just gonna set to a minimal because I don't want to. I don't want to spend all this time rendering these photos. Now you can do smart previews. Smart previews allow you to do editing. If, let's say you put your files on a um, on a external hard drive. You then, for some reason, unplug the external hard drive. If you have smart previews, what it will allow you to do is it will allow you to edit those photos without the hard drive being connected. And then once the hard drive connects, it will update the metadata information um, to your chem, to your uh, hard drive, or you might have to right click and go uh, save metadata information. Then it will make those updates. So the smart previews are kind of cool because it allows you to kind of work offline. Uh, I could click don't import duplicates. You see when I click that, I already have the wedding imported into Lightroom. So this is the second time I've actually imported this into the Lightroom. It will let me know that all of these files right here have already been imported to Lightroom. They're already there, so I don't need to actually re-import them. But Today, for learning purposes, we are, of course, going to import those. Uh, then you can make a second copy if you want to send them to a second place, which is kind of nice, right? So if you want to make another backup, you can set up a backup folder system as well, and you can use that if you wanted to. You could add it to your collection. I, don't, I have all my stuff built in order and sequencing the way I want it to. Uh, then you have file renaming information here if we want to go in and rename the files. If you have a specific way that you like to name files, um, which you know I could go in and make them, let's see if it custom name, right? So I could go in and number it as one, or what I could do is, so you could go in and you could rename these. And so what I could do is I could do, I could name them all, since so we'll add zero three to these, let's say, or well, the folder said zero four, so we'll add zero four, 16, R U P P wedding okay so now it's going to it's going to rename all these so if i have a way of searching for files on my computer this is going to help me out with that so um and then i can sequence them start at number one and work my way up so we'll do that just for fun i i, ne I never rename my files i don't ever need to but this is a, a cool and fun way to do it um so it will batch rename those files for you which is pretty cool um it's going to add my metadata information in um, as it imports as well. Uh, if we go down to, uh, we can do presets as well. So uh, let's pull this up. So developing settings. So we can add developing settings to all these. So if you do a lot of weddings or a lot of, let's say portraitures and you already have the same light, right? So you, you already have kind of the edited setup, right? You've already set it up that this is how you want to edit. You can make these presets. And then I can click one of these presets and what it will do is when it imports, it will add that preset to every single file, making part, part of my editing already done. Um, now this is going to work when you're using the same lighting, same kind of camera setup, and all the pictures are going to be same. It would not look that good if I did it to like a wedding because my lighting and there's different scenes, uh, just too much is changing throughout the wedding for me to use a specific preset, in my opinion. Now there are some people that do use presets for their wedding photos. and. Uh, you know, all the power to you on that. I just, not my style. All right, so now we've talked about the side panel a little bit. Let's jump over to uh, the picture. So now we gotta go into the hard drive. We gotta find it to import it. So, and then it's under david.com. And then we got Rup down here and it's gonna pull up all these. Now again, if I hit, and it's gonna tell me, oh, these are duplicates. You've already got these in your system. Well, it's okay, because I know that. We're not going to do smart previews. We don't plan to do anything offline. And then we're just going to click import. So now it's going to import these files. And then once they've been imported, we'll go into pictures so you can see, so we can take a look at them. So here, the, here are the files that we just imported. Now I can go with, into separate folders within that. Now this is just set to wedding, right? As you can see, and then if we go here, it's 6D. If I had files in the 7D Mark II folder and I had files in the T3i folder, which I'll show you on the actual folder where we're actually doing the real editing, 
And so, as you can see here, 6D and T3i. So I can jump between these two cameras and edit just the files on those cameras, or I can do all the files for all the cameras. So like right now, I've just been working on the 6D files, and then I'll jump to the T3i files. Uh, I only took like 50 pictures with the T3i. I don't really use it a lot. It's a backup camera, but I had it with me that day. 6D took all the majority of the files that I wanted to edit. And then I just got my files from my second shooter today. So those files will actually be the 7D Mark II, and that will be added. That will be another folder added. So as you can see, that's why I like to add in that extra information because then I can go in here and I can be like, it's not an untitled folder. I can see, okay, so these were my 6D files are at. So let's go back to the lesson folder, which is the 7416, and we'll go to 6D. And let's talk a little bit about how I categorize my files now that they're in Lightroom. How, what's the fastest way to, to figure out which files I want to edit and don't edit? And then that way I'm not spending a bunch of time looking at files or doing going through all thousand files and editing one photo at a time, right? That's really annoying to me. I don't want to just edit because then you, then if you leave, you got to remember where you left off and it's just, it's a, it's a mess, right? So this system I think works really well. So let's click into the file. And so I spend, once I've got everything backed up, all the smart previews are done. And now I go through every single file, look at them, and I add a rating to each file. I add a rating between three and five. Anything that is a one or two star, I am actually not going to use whatsoever. I'm never going to go back and look at it. If it's a one or two star, it's not usable, in my opinion. Um, or I just don't need it. Um, or I won't rate it at all. If I don't want to edit it, I just won't rate the file. So you have your numbers, one, two, three, four, five on your keyboard. You can actually use that. So if I hit a five, you're going to notice it said five star rating. So it just made that picture a five star rating. Now, this is a really goofy picture. Why would I want to make this a five-star rating? I know the groom really well. He's a goofy guy. He's really going to like this photo. Uh, plus, these two groomsmen decided that they needed to give him a kiss before his wife gave him a kiss about half an hour down the line from here. Um, so this is just a really fun group of guys that are super goofy. And, and I just know that the groom is going to really like this photo. Uh, as you can see, he's totally cheesing it up here. Um, so that's, that's probably a five-star photo for me. Like That is something that I definitely want to, want to edit. And if we go to the next, next one, this is a little bit better maybe, so we may want to jump back and forth. Uh, but I like how both the groomsmen are kind of going in right here. One's already making contact, the other one's on his way in. And by the time I get to the next f picture, the uh, other groomsman is already pulling out. It's just not as good of a photo. Um, this is still a good photo too. It may get edited as well. So I may three-star this one because it's, it's good, but it's not as good as this this first photo. Now, a lot of my three-star photos are going to be under uh, pictures of like the family, uh, or not the family, family and friends. Like so, at the reception where they're walking around or dancing. Um, the same thing with event photography. Uh, if you're not, if you have a specific person that you're supposed to be taking a picture of at an event, you know those are going to be more your four and five stars. The the main focus, the the first kiss, the pictures of the wedding rings, the walking down the aisle. These are five star moments, right? So then you have some five star moments where you have multiple pictures, and so they be they get graded down to like a four star. And then you just have these three star pictures that you know the groom. And the bride are really going to want the pictures. They're really, you know, there's nothing special about the pictures, but they're just, they're just pictures of the day. And the bride and groom are going to want those pictures of their family members there, their friends there, right? So those are going to be three star photos. So all three, four, and five stars, you're going to edit all those photos, but you just kind of want to label them at, at the importance of them. Now, some people, what you might want to do is you might just go through and add everything five star, five star, five star, and then you're going to go back and just edit all your five stars. I like to break it down into categories. Um, if at all possible. Um, and then I don't always add a one or two star. I used to do that where I, I rated every single photo, but that took a little extra time. Mainly, if it's not a three, four, or five star, it just doesn't get a rating. And I'm going to show you why and how that works. So again, I can just kind of scroll down. Uh, there's another, this is a really, another really goofy, fun picture. Uh, I know the groom's really going to like this picture. Um, apparently, the groomsmen uh, were very much into kissing the groom. Uh, first time I've ever seen this happen at a wedding. Um, so I, another thing, when I when I put these 
put these guys together, you get your normal. These, this is just a fun, like everyone smile, kind of, you know, a, a, a typical wedding picture. But then I, I tell them, you know, after we get them going, like have some fun, get goofy with it. Uh, you'll be amazed at the f photos you're going to receive um, from these guys. Some are really, you know, the groom's really nervous, but it, this, that nervousness comes out in this weird, like funny way when, when they get goofy with these photos. Um, so, uh, this one's okay. Not everyone's looking at me. You've got a guy back here scowling, right? So like, I'm, this is, this is a no, I'm just not going to star this. This is not a star moment. This one's a little bit better. Um, then we jump to here. So out of these, I need to pick one that I really like, right? And the flash didn't go off on that one, but it's still savable, surprisingly. And we'll talk about that in part two on how to edit these. This is actually still a usable picture, uh, even though it looks really dark here. Um, so that's not good. That's not good. That's actually probably the best one. And again, I can save this if I wanted to. And I'm just going to do this just so you guys can see that this is probably worth keeping. Uh, what we do is we bring up the shadows a little bit. We bring up the exposure a little bit. And then we bring down the highlights. And we'd have to tweak it a little bit more. But this is already, you know, this is probably the best one, right? It's not that great of a photo. It's not a three star. It's not a five star. You know, it's, it's a four star in my opinion, you know? Uh, it might get degraded down to a three star. Again, we're just doing goofy. These guys just, they're all best friends. They've known each other forever. And they're just, they were just a fun group to shoot. It was a fun, fun wedding. And now we're jumping over to the bride. She's getting ready. Uh, she's very emotional and uh, just, she's really prepared for a day, but very emotional moment here. So we're just trying to capture that. And, you know, I really like this shot of her right here. You know, I can crop this out over here. We've got some stuff in the background. She's not going to worry about that. She really just is going to want to capture the emotion, the candidness of this photo. So for me, this is, this is a four-star moment. So now that I've gone through thousands of my pictures, or a thousand, I think with the second shooter, we did uh, roughly uh, 1,500 photos for the day. So I've gone through all my photos. I've rated them three through five, or you can use a different rating system if you like. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to click on the three stars. I'm going to double click. And now if you notice, it just pulls up the files that have been starred, that, that have been starred three star or better. If I clicked on two stars, it's just going to show me this two stars are better or the one stars are one stars are better. Um, if I, there's no stars, then it's going to show all of them. So I just want to see just the ones that have been rated three or higher. And so these are my three stars or higher right here. And as you can see, so it's just going to go through and it's just going to show me those. So now, once I've gone through all the files, I can now just focus on the files I actually want to edit. The ones I actually want to take the time, tweak, crop, do whatever I need to do, and then export. So in part two of this series, we're actually going to go through the, uh, I've actually gone through and starred all of the wedding photos already for this wedding, uh, minus the second shooter ones, which I got to go through tomorrow. Anyways, so in part two, we'll go through, we'll, we'll pull up all the three stars of better, and we'll go through and I'll pick out some specific photos, and I'll actually edit those photos for you guys and kind of walk you through some of the editing aspects. Um, editing in Lightroom is, is just amazing. Uh, it's so quick. Now I always do touch-ups and in Photoshop, uh, every photo will get go through Photoshop for sharpening because Lightroom sharpening application is not that good. Uh, Photoshop is much better. So we may jump into Photoshop for a moment just to show you a few tweaks that I really like to do when I'm doing wedding or event photography. Um, but this is just a really quick way. Now event photography, when I shoot for a local magazine, we, the, we upload them to their website and they, they don't really care about as much about having the quality of the picture perfect. They just want an edited, a quick, quick edit uh, and it has to be cropped in a certain way. They want it turned around like 24 hours. So I go shoot the event and then I just go into Lightroom. I, I just go through, uh, I, I use just a five star for those. I five star all the ones I wanna do. And I go back in and I just do a quick, quick edit just to make sure the lighting looks good. With a wedding, people are paying a lot more money. You gotta, you gotta do just more than the light. You gotta clean up the face a little bit. Um, you gotta make sure the light's good. You gotta look at the background. You gotta make sure you crop where it needs to be cropped. Um, you just gotta be very aware of the whole photo. photo. So this is, the end of part one, hopefully this helps you guys out with just the basic setup of your workflow. And now in part two, we're going to go over editing. So thanks for stopping in. Uh, again, feel free to uh, check us out on Facebook at Media Unlocked, Twitter at Media Unlocked. Uh, comments down below, uh, emails at MediaUnlocked101 at Gmail. Um, yeah, guys, we'll catch you next time.
Guys, if you'd like to check out our website where we have all kinds of fun and exciting blogs, videos, and extra information that isn't on our YouTube page, click right here. If you'd like to talk to us or contact us and kind of take a look at all the different stuff that we have going on, um, we've kind of funneled it all through our Facebook. You can hit our Facebook page right here and follow us or like us. Now, if you like to look at cool pictures and behind the scenes stuff, we do that on Instagram right here. So go on and follow us on Instagram. And of course, we got our cute little bird right here, Mr. Twitter. And you can follow us as we do our short tweets.